All right, guys, back here at the Joshi Pod, and very happy to have somebody who I saw at PWG at Ground Zero in San Diego. You can see him on the United Wrestling Network, GCW, and just about anywhere else. Welcome to the Joshi Pod, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. How you doing, man? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I, lo- I loved your match against Peter Avalon yesterday. Oh, thank you. You watched, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it was, it was not an easy one, but... I uh I came out victorious, so I'm I'm down one one guy. I got uh two more rounds to go in the tournament to become the first United Wrestling Network world champion. So I think it's in, in your future. Hopefully. I mean I'm definitely working, working, working to get to the top, baby. <laughs> doing, what, doing what I gotta do, you know, studying my tapes, to be honest. You wanna hear <laughs> speaking of Joshi, I that match, so, uh, there was some, something in that match that was directly inspired from a match between uh, Mako Satomura and uh, Io Shirai. So it's and because I, I watched, I watched it on the airplane on the way to the show. <laughs> so I mean, you know, little little uh, breaking breaking kayfabe, but I mean, that's just how inspirational some of this stuff is to me. It's 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 really it's really awesome. I've I've been become more influenced by Joshi and women pro wrestling. Um, in the last year than I probably ever have my whole career or my whole life watching wrestling. So I, I'm friends with B Boy down here in San Diego, and he trains guys. And I always tell him, tell the guys to watch Joshi wrestling from 20 years ago. They'll look innovative. Yeah, yeah. Well, they'll just look. You know, I mean, look like you're really, really, really in a the fight of your life. Some of those matches are just so r- reckless. Uh, and crazy and wild and it's just its own wrestling style and those girls especially the ones back in the day they have like unlimited gas tanks they're <laughs> they have they have insane cardio and they, just, just, it, it, they don't stop moving it's just violent that's that's how i always do people ask me about the old joshi it's like it's just violent yeah it is pretty violent those girls definitely all want to win they all definitely look like they really want to win when they wrestle each other and it's not like stabbing each other with with like scissors violent it's like just hits are violent you know the the suplexes are violent just everything's violent yeah and but you did have the the girls who used the foreign objects and (laughs) got crazy with that stuff too and got really violent like i don't think anybody's more violent than uh when Shimoda and, and uh, Mita were the tagging as the LCO and all that, like those, those chicks were fucking mauling those girls, some of them. And there would always be like crazy juice jobs and lots of blood. And then the, what's really wild is like Manami Toyota was like Sabu. She was like so reckless with her body, like insane, like throwing her body around like like it was nothing. She was just do, do not even think twice about doing a missile drop kick to the floor and splatting on the fucking concrete. <laughs> like okay, you know. It's amazing they're still walking right now. <laughs> well, Japanese uh people in general are like genetic freaks. Some of them. They're like they especially when it comes to like aging. Like, we're, like uh, I I saw this photo a couple of weeks ago. I, you know, anytime I see a photo of a uh, of um, what's her name, uh, Megumi Gudo, mm-hmm. uh, or or and I saw a photo of her and Masato Tanaka together. I'm I'm friends with Masato Tanaka, and I can't believe he is in his he's fifty or fifty one or so. He's uh, in his fifties. This guy looks incredible. He's in amazing shape. And he's still wrestling at like a super high level. He hasn't changed really at all. So it's pretty crazy. He's like, you know, has gifted aging genes. And so does she. I saw this photo of them. They're both in their 50s, but they they look so healthy and shape young. So I think like Japanese people have some sort of extra durability that uh, maybe other people lack. I don't know. Clean, clean air, probably just clean, cleaner living, maybe. <laughs> Oh yeah, that country is pretty wicked clean. Like, uh, you could like. Have you ever been to Tokyo before? I've been like five times. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, perfect. So you understand, like, you know, you could. In mo- mo- there's like the one. I guess it's kind of like reminds you of like a real like kind of urban city in New York City, a little bit seedier and dirtier. Where's Shibuya, where all the tourists go? Yeah, that's where like I like. That to hang out. Like that's place. where I like to hang out. 
<laughs> yeah, that was more like normal, I guess. But for yeah. the most part, like everywhere else in Tokyo, yeah. everything is so clean. You can like eat off the floor. I literally think you like the like the how clean is this are the subway stations? Oh, the it's trains impeccable. I grew up in New York City. I c- I couldn't believe like the difference in the quality of of just everything there uh, was seemed so much. Um, it seems like people really took care of everything around them a lot better. And I, you talk about aging. I, I got to interview Bull Nakano in March in Tokyo. And when she walked in the room, I'm like, who's this young lady? <laughs> oh, wow. So you did that interview uh, in person? Face to face with Bull Nakano. I thought that the audio sounded pretty good. I was like, what's it? But I, I did, 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 didn't know if you did it in person or not. Fumi, Fumi, Saito, Actually, Fumi Saito set it up for me. Oh, really? Yeah. And I got to, we, we got to meet at a karaoke bar. I guess because it's you know the the sound quality is nice you know they, they, the acoustics and stuff are all set so yeah he, he told me to go go run a, a karaoke bar for for two hours and interview her I'm like okay wow yeah she's pretty pretty cool like uh, that that she has like a pretty wild story too right like I mean, oh yeah the professional golfing afterwards. <laughs> 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 she talks about suicide and stuff and it just it was just a, cra- a crazy story and i have this weekend i have yak, yak yasakawa on the show too from um from stardom oh, wow, she, cool. she went through that incident with yoshiko so it's who are like your favorite ones out of the old school girls oh i'm in love with bull nakano I, I would marry her tomorrow if she would take my hand in marriage. <laughs> i'm in love you want to know who i'm in love with who's that uh, the kako inoye <laughs> <laughs> I got to meet like, her a few years ago too in Tokyo. You, she's, you met her? I did. I took a picture uh, with her. She's such a sweetheart. Fuck you. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know why I agreed to do this show. <laughs> no, she she's like my favorite. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I got. Let's 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 not, let's not turn this into like a fucking Gaga creep fest, but. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's so hot, and like you know how they all have like the picture books and stuff. Like her purrs are just so absolutely wild. <laughs> it's like so, and, and then her wrestling is like crazy too. It's like you, you wouldn't, you just there's like so many things about those girls like you just really would never expect based on the way they look, and then they just get in the ring, and some of them just turn into like absolute demons. She's she's the one I say that you could pull from back then and bring her in right now, and she would be the top star right now. Oh, I mean, absolutely, one hundred percent. Just because her her looks, the whole package, you know, she would be able to just I think dominate right now. I mean, come on, like, dude, I thought about this the other day, like you know, WWE gobbles them all up because I was like thinking about like how you know it's pretty amazing, like the best booked person in WWE in years, like the best wrestler pound for pound in the WWE in years is Oscar. Yeah. So it, you got you got to think about like how um, how they they took her they got they, they took a uh, Kyrie Sane uh, Io Shirai is kind of like getting a big push now um I think Manami Toyota would be would have been the WWE like are yeah. you kidding it'd be like yeah. she'd be like a superstar she'd be a child superhero like it was <laughs> she'd, she'd be the biggest deal ever I mean she's like uh I guess like maybe like Io Shirai is kind of like the new Manami Toyota like dude how mm-hmm. many times in some of these those matches and stardom from like five years ago dude Io Shirai is just constantly going to the top rope oh yeah just constantly going to the top rope it's insane it's so it's like she really is the, the definition of uh what do they call her the something of the sky or something yeah I, I can't it's, remember <laughs> she, it's, it's, she really is though she really yeah. lives up lives up to that so I, I you know Manami Toyota was like that too she would like just attack people with drop kicks and, and all sorts of could never stop hitting the ropes and never stop moving. And she must have had like a crazy workout regimen or something because she's so in shape. Well, don't they do like 10,000 Hindu squats before they for warming up just, you know, before they even start rolling? I don't know particularly exactly what the training was like in the All Japan Women's Dojo but I'm sure it definitely was hard. I mean, Bull Nakano kind of talked about it, right? Mm-hmm. I remember she was talking about it. And who trained her again? The the, the main one. Did Jaguar train her? No, Jaguar no. trained uh, trained Takako Inoye. Yeah. But like, who oh, trained but those those girls? I mean, the young girls just got the piss beat out of them. Well, they all beat the piss out of each other. But yeah. For the most part, I'm I'm thinking like Cal Stanks wise. They definitely must have did a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. You know. I think a lot of people sometimes 
um, have like, like this crazy idea of like how they train in Japanese dojos. And I'm sure in like some cases, a lot of it is probably like folklore. Um, but I'm sure in a lot of cases, they actually trained really, 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 really hard. Like I'm sure in the new Japan dojo back in the day when like Carl Gotch was training people, <laughs> it was probably a fucking shit show. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just, just guys screaming in torture. <laughs> Just guys like probably doing like so many like actual real like wrestling uh, conditioning exercises just being put pushed pushed to the limit. You know, there's uh I recently there's been like this interview series with um Tanahashi where he was talking about like his he failed his first tryout to get into the New Japan Dojo. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it's you know I, I'm sure that things are still still going running accordingly but i'm sure back in the day like obviously um, those trainers probably took like wicked liberties with uh <laughs> a lot of the talent yeah what, what, what can you what can you do if, if somebody decides if carl gotch decides to grab you and get a hold of you what can you do nothing yeah it's just they really wanted to find real athletes if you really look back even at the girls look at the girls mm -hmm. um look at the girls read about the girls uh past before they got into wrestling their credentials um they're they're all they all have like some sort of an athletic background. Um, like I'm pretty sure all of them have some sort of an athletic background or they're yeah, or judo, they're like, volleyball, all kinds of different yeah, things. Or yeah. Takako is like an idol. They were all going to be idols or something or what, <laughs> but, uh, but even the guys forget about it. Like look at all the guys that all Japan pro wrestling uh, would bring in there or even new Japan. They're all scouted amateur wrestlers. Um, you know, top top of the country judo and amateur wrestlers and they all have cauliflower ears before they even start wrestling yeah they're all like just like super athletes and you know i i think about uh the new japan situation now like they they're 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 planning in the way that they do things in like the long term not like try to take everything over like think about like how they're doing it with america mm -hmm. they're, like what wwe wants to do setting up these everybody there's a rumor they're always going to set up pcs in all these countries right it's a it's a it, new japan has had a dojo in, in the country they had one before um but now they have they've had one now i think for like the last four or five years and they're developing talent of americans to, as young lions here to you know ultimately become bigger stars for them and uh it's just i just i think the japanese style dojo system and the way they train wrestlers and the, especially new japan right now in particular with those guys i mean those guys are trained by shibata so <laughs> it's like the dojo system and the development of some of these wrestlers, I mean, it, it speaks volumes to the wrestlers that they become, whether it is the old school Joshis or, or the guys or the Joshis now, like these mm -hmm. girls all develop like so, so they develop so well. Like I really like uh, Sendai girls a lot. That's like one of the mm -hmm. new ones I, I follow the most. Uh, and like, look at like the people that are developed there and the people that work those shows and look at like who runs it, you know, make Osadamora. She's like unbelievable. Are you a big fan no. of her? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's fucking crazy. That woman. She is such a good wrestler. She's in like, she, like, I don't like watch a ton of her. Like, I don't like watch her. Uh, I, I won't like, like I could sit and watch like hours of Takako or Manami sometimes. So like Mako Satomura is someone who gets like sprinkled in sometimes. <laughs> but this is one thing I noticed. Anytime I ever do watch a match with her in it, it usually ends up when I'm done. I'm like, holy fuck. Like that's one of the best matches I've ever seen. Yeah. She's, she's just like insane. She's so good. It's funny watching like on the WWE network. If you like look her up, you'll see her like on some WCW shows when she was 16 and she was already really good. Really? I never really watched those like nitros that she, she did. I she was really like on those, like those Disney shows, like the ones at the Disney down in Florida. Those like one of the ring rotated around. Oh yeah. I watched dude. That was like childhood wrestling. Well, I watched that was what I watched worldwide Saturday night. Those, yeah. were my those were my favorite shows, honestly, <laughs> but she was on, she was on those shows and it's like just a, just a child basically just in there wrestling and she looks completely different. And she, cause yeah. she, she was a child. Yeah. Yeah. Who, um, you know, who else is really fucking good, like insanely good, filthy, uh, like, especially like in the prime, a uh, Hamada, do you oh, like Hamada? Yes. Oh my, oh my god, dude! I've seen some Hamada matches that have like absolutely floored me, blown me away. Her striking is like absolutely insane. That oh, the, that like spinning crescent kick she does to the head. Oh yeah, it's fucking filthy. Like <laughs> those girls are all such good strikers. Most of them like they have some nasty like strikes, kicks. 
all sorts of like crazy stuff. Some of them develop into like insane athletes. Like Io Shirai, she is an insane athlete. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's crazy. She doesn't stop flipping and moving. It's it's, it's like you have to. Have, you don't understand the wind. You have to have to do that. It's like it's crazy. And it, it yeah, it just seems like these the. <sighs> I don't think it's genetics. Like, I think it's hard work. I think it's, you know, but I think they have an advantage of the, the dojo system because they can, their job pretty much is wrestling as opposed to here. If you're trying to work your way up here, you have to have a day job plus, you, you know, do wrestling on the weekends. Hey man, it's no excuse to not work hard, you know? So it's, it's cause, cause the, the, you, you don't know those, those girls particularly probably do too. And I'm sure not all of them have the luxury of just getting into a dojo and getting paid to become wrestler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they all uh, have their own hardships and it's not exactly like that getting into it. Yeah. And I, but I, but I do believe you and I do, I do think that a lot of those girls just work really, really, really hard. It, yeah. it definitely is not like a genetic, uh, it, you know, thing it's it's they just grind it out they work really hard and they they do eat sleep shit and breathe wrestling so it's definitely i mean that's why you have these these girls just look at the way um you know obviously uh Indie wrestling here with girl, girls of, of professional wrestling here have come a long way mm-hmm. as far as athleticism as far as execution as far as technique and thing like things like that but um i mean the girls the wrestling in japan have been like that forever it's pretty much they've been on point as far as like their relative time and and that style for that relative time they've the girls have always brought it you know yeah and when when wwe brings people in from from japan they're instantly the best people in the i mean no matter how good you think sasha banks and bailey are you know that's the but that's the yeah that's you're right that's the perception is the is it's because of the the reputation that they have for all these years of of being you know be touted as like the best female wrestlers so you know you gotta you look at the little things as to what they all do right as opposed to what like girls here maybe weren't doing at at a, at a certain point and i think that's a big thing girls have improved a lot more here f- from kind of maybe adapting a uh, m- harder work ethic and training understanding like training is more important uh you know because there was a time in the business and it, there's, there's always going to be a time in the business like this is because it is the entertainment business and it is um, the united states and you know everything works different here but at one point it seemed like girls were just in the business trying like get famous you know what i mean mm-hmm. and then you have girls who are you know developing or trying to develop into like really good serious wrestlers and i and that's the and that's why i i, I kind of took the reins or went forward with wrestling girls a lot more Mm -hmm. at a time over the last 10 years when guys like wouldn't do it you know what i mean and kind of got into that because i i just feel like uh maybe a lot of girls didn't have the opportunity to reach that potential or see exactly how good they really were unless they were wrestling someone that was more physically capable do you understand yeah and, and also i mean to they say to get better you need to wrestle people that are better than you 100 percent. and there's not a whole i mean the this the pure numbers the numbers game you know there's way more men who wrestle than women who wrestle so and, and there are going to be more better men wrestlers than women wrestlers so they they you you almost have to wrestle men to get better i think yeah Does that make any sense oh yeah and and i just feel like it's cool when they mix it up too like dude okay do you remember there was a match it's from like 1999 it was like the great muda versus kensuke sasaki and akira hokoto is out there with uh with Kensuke Sasaki. Yeah. And like, and she, she gives fucking, uh, the great Muda like the made in japan deal <laughs> and, and then he missed her have you ever seen that yes that's amazing <laughs> oh, i mean like listen man like if the great Muda had no problem taking a bump for her in like 1999 you know what i mean like it's just it was just the presentation of that whole spot everything about it was insane and amazing it was so good who quit there? Was it Disco Inferno who quit his job or was going to quit his job to not lose to Jackie or something like that? No, I can't remember no, who it was. No, I have no clue. <laughs> As you, so who do you you like, Bull Meccano? Yeah, Who else do you love watching from back in the day? Uh, Kyoko Inoue is amazing. Uh, oh, Kira Hokuto is amazing. Yeah, she is the best. She's she's like the down low, like the crowd. The, her matches, the crowd is the most insane. Yeah. And then like Chigusa Nagayo is amazing. I mean, name anybody cutie suzuki was good you know they're 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 better than than the uh, the average woman now you know all of them are yeah they just all like had some serious balls 
yeah, no fear, no fear. You know, we're going to be reckless and, and just beat the shit out of each other and, and, you know, and do it again tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, how about the, the 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 one who's still doing it now, Ozaki Mayumi oh. Ozaki? Yeah. She she was pretty ballsy, and then I didn't realize how small she was. And you look at her back then; she's like smaller than like Takako Inoue. She's like yeah. cute, cutie Suzuki size almost. It, yeah, it, it's a, it's amazing. And, and I've met quite a few of the the women, and they're all tiny. I mean, almost to a person, they're just tiny little people, and they're just beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, yeah, they all move so fast too. Oh yeah, so you've been to Japan what a couple? How many times have you been toured Japan? I just been to Japan once. Oh, was it just the one this year? Yep, it was my first time. It was the time of my life. So I like to ask people, the women I have on the show, how they found out they were going to Japan. How did you find out you were going to Japan? Oh, I found out I was going to Japan from uh, Brett Waterdale, uh, the guy who owns GCW, the booker and promoter of, of Game Changer Wrestling. And um, I kind of like, th- my my goal, my life goal was to wrestle in Japan. My whole fucking life, pretty much. So <laughs> I was like, kind of feeling like, I don't know, man, am I ever going to really get the chance or am I running out of options or whatever? And I knew I needed to get like back in tight with GCW I was in this company Evolve for like two years. It didn't really work out very well. I had like no buzz. It was just kind of whatever. And then um, I was like, all right, me and I got out of there out of my contract and I, and I knew I had to start getting it together. And GCW was like getting really, really hot. And then GCW did like a tour of Japan and I heard it was like successful or it went well. And, you know, you saw everybody talking about it. And I was like, shit, man, there's no reason why I can't do this. So I became like a regular at GCW um, cause I was with that company from before it even was GCW, but then we had like, I had a falling out with this guy that used to own it, stopped working there, but getting into GCW definitely was my main goal was to get, get to Japan. And it was the best thing I could have did cause it worked out. I remember I got, I got told I was going to go and I st- started going through the process and they, you know, they, t- they, st- GCW works with another company in Japan called freedoms and. Mm-hmm. They they took care of our visas and all that stuff, and I had to go to like the, the embassy and get all that shit and do all that that that, that stuff over there, whatever wherever the hell I went. I, <laughs> I had to get the you know get all the paperwork and the and I, and I was like, I can't believe it's actually happening. <laughs> and then we went, and it was far exceeded any expectation I ever had. So you, I'm sure you've seen plenty of shows on YouTube from Shinkiba First Ring. What was it like to wrestle at Shinkiba for you? Oh, it was amazing. I, I tell people all the time, uh, and people ask like, "What's what's the best i you know way to get a good idea of you as a, like as a wrestler? What's your what's the best match you've ever had?" And it was my, my first match in Japan. I I loved it against uh, this guy Yuji Okabayashi. Mm-hmm. And it was at Shinkiba, and just to like give you an idea, GCW is so hot that you know I hadn't I didn't even know what to expect and. Uh, we sold out three nights in a row at Shinkiba, like completely like packed to the gills um, three nights in a row. And, and they, the fans are so into GCW and all the, all of us. And they, they already, they know who exactly who I was before I even got there, but I was really, you know, just so pumped up on making a really good first impression. So kind of blow your mind that people knew who you were over there. Yeah. It was like the greatest feeling in the world because I've spent pretty much more than like half my life, like worshiping their culture and their <laughs> wrestling. So I was like, Oh man, this is unbelievable. And uh, yeah, the fans definitely do not disappoint. And it was, it was a, it was an unbelievable environment in that building. And I, I honestly just can't wait to go back. So I've, that is uh, definitely like the best place to wrestle in the whole world, to be honest. But you got to wrestle Kirk and Hall as well. I did get to wrestle at Kurokun Hall, and that was absolutely insane. That was bananas. I, I remember walking to Kurokun Hall, and um, like I, I took a, I went to like you know that store Champions, uh-huh. 
I had like, that was like the last time I could go to champion. So I went like <laughs> one last time and then I went to Kurakuen hall after I went to champion. So I was like walking from champions over to like Tokyo dome city to Kurakuen hall. And like, I was walking and I could see the Tokyo dome. Like, and I, st- I was listening to, that was, I'm dude, I'm such a nerd. I was listening to triumph in my, in my headphones, like on full, <laughs> bl- on full blast on loom. Like and I was like, I can't believe this is happening. And then, uh, yeah, I, I wrestled the curtain and all. It was fucking awesome. How did it feel to walk out the little curtain? And in, in, I mean, was it your dream? I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true for you. Yeah, it literally was my life. I, my life goal, my life, everything can, can come into fruition. I. uh and the match was great. And um, in the middle of the match, there was a spot at the end where, and it happened completely like on the fly. Like I, I didn't plan it, but I uh, totally did a shining wizard and the crowd fucking gasped. They went <laughs> wild. They really like blew up for it. And I was like, wow, that was so cool. I have a pretty good picture of it too. How did the fans take to you? I mean, like, did you guys do the, the merch after the shows and stuff like that as well? Yeah, if, if, if I didn't go to Japan, I would have never survived the pandemic. Let's just put it that way. Really good. Yeah, I made so much money off of merchandise in Japan um, that it, it pretty much I, I could I kids I can't I can't claim uh, unemployment. <laughs> so I haven't <laughs> had a real job in years. Um, so I was if an Uber driver. If an Uber driver can get unemployment, why can't you? <laughs> It's just, I, I can't, I, I, I literally, I've talked to my accountant. I was like, how do we do this? How can we figure this out? What do we got to do? And uh, no, so I couldn't, I could I couldn't, couldn't get unemployment. I could, you know, all I got was the, whatever they sent us for that stimulus check. Yeah. And I pretty much survived the first couple of months because of not, not working at all. It's because of, the, you know, how well I did in Japan. So if that gives you an idea of, of how I was received, you know, I thought I was received pretty, pretty well. And I started to really open up um, my mind to, to understanding like, okay, this is like really a, the land of true opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know exactly like where I need to be and how, you know, what I need to do. So, you know, Japan is uh pretty much, they, they, it's it, obviously everything like changes like Joshi, let's, you know, that's the whole point of this, this conversation. We're talking mm-hmm. about Joshi, right? Obviously everything evolves and changes with the time. Everything has its own like era, right? It's never going to be as good as it was then, or it always changes for the worse or whatever. Right. In Japan though, um, they, they still kind of pretty much, they, they respect kayfabe mm-hmm. and they protect the business a lot more, like way more. I mean, you know, then, then here, are you kidding? Here, it's just a free for all. It's a shit show. It's honestly, it's, it's, it's not even funny. It's a disaster in a lot of ways. So yeah, when I, when I interview wrestlers, I mean, K, I have to work around K with, with them, how I ask my questions sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you gotta be, I mean, you know, I respect you, it. you should. And uh, you know, I'm going to mean, it's just, you know, the, then the day, the day now of, of interaction on Twitter and all that stuff, it's just the, the, the line is so, blurred between the fans and the wrestlers now so it's it's a weird weird place to be whereas in japan they're still pretty tight about it which is dope and um over there obviously like we talked about training and fundamentally wise i mean forget about it here in this country uh people don't even train and they they become wrestlers and then they just like get decent at it just doing it but they're never really trained there's you know how many there's so many people that have never been trained before that are pro wrestlers Mm -hmm. and they actually get by and they make it and whatever you know what i mean (laughs) if if you make your act work or you however you go about you know making it but what i'm saying is every wrestler over there i'd say guy or girl top to bottom no matter what level you're at and there's plenty of indies over there and there is plenty of shitty wrestlers okay i'm not yes we're not gonna just say everybody there everybody's a stud it's there it's just like anything else but i will say that a majority of everyone over there probably has a way better fundamental base of pro wrestling than a large majority of the people over here do you know what i mean yeah yeah so uh, japan just has the edge in so many ways when it comes to professional wrestling in my opinion look at the biggest company in japan new japan pro wrestling um they still very much present it as a as a sporting event they still very much uh will create 
an environment that um, thrives off of professional wrestling. It's, it's still some, it's still about pro wrestling. It's still a contest. It's still, Mm -hmm. you know, down to earth and, and realistic. It's, it's, you know, and you want, they want to win. They, 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 they let the guys go out there and tell stories Yeah, and and it doesn't seem extremely micromanaged. Whereas here it's like, TV wrestling is becoming literal, like screw completely front to back, very poorly scripted television. Yeah. So it's just I I I been look at New Japan for wrestling. Look at look at how they're handling. Look at how all the companies over there are handling running shows during this. Mm-hmm. They're they're gonna run twenty thousand at at the dome and in, in uh, for Wrestle Kingdom. They're already doing like half filled arenas and stuff. It's just they're so ahead of the curve. They had <laughs> they had fans at baseball games this year. Yeah, man, it's just, and they're, and they're not, they doesn't seem like they're ripping each other's hair out, you know, it's, a, no. or it, it's just, they were, like, they're wearing masks, they don't care, you know, it is what they were all wearing masks before this, I was yeah. there in February, yeah. and everybody had the mask on, and I, I was like, what the, why everybody wears the mask here, like, I don't even know what, why, I've never worn a mask, you know, like that before, you know, and then the next month, Oh, fucking everything changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there right at the end, I, I, I wasn't even sure I was going to get home or not. Because it was like right when it happened. What's that? When were you there? Like at the end of March, like right at the end, near the end of March. Oh shit! You stayed till the end of March. Oh man. Yeah. And my flight home, there was like there was the entire flight was like thirty people on that giant airplane. Oh man. It was wonderful. <laughs> Sounds like a dream come true. <laughs> it was. I was on a plane last night, dude. These fucking planes, they don't give a fuck. And you know what's so fucking funny, too? I was talking to my friend about it. I don't want to get into too much stuff. We're supposed to be talking about Japanese women's wrestling. But how bogus is it that like people are bitching and moaning? How come people aren't bitching and moaning that the airlines are running flights where we're sitting shoulder to shoulder, but we can't go inside and watch an event inside? You know what? It doesn't yeah. for two hours. You can't go watch a wrestling show, and so you know it. Like it, people are paying good money to put themselves at risk, sitting shoulder to shoulder on an airplane. It's like, what's what's where's Mo- the money? Where's the in the air? Yeah, money. money. We don't have any money, you know, <laughs> fucking goddamn. But yeah, let's not let's not get too 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 deep in those waters, man. Yeah, the, the politics aren't aren't so fun in, in right now. No. I wish, uh, I, I would, you know, I, I wish, uh, who do I wish was like my fucking actual president? Who would be like the best, like leader president of like all the Joshi women? Didn't Kandari, Kandari ran for like, <laughs> like office or something, right? Yeah, all those, yeah, <laughs> they all, uh, they turn into, poly- I mean, en- Enoki was a politician, right? Oh, dude, Enoki's like negotiated with Saddam Hussein. <laughs> He did. All right. You, let's, this is supposed to be about Joshi, but if you just want to dedicate an entire podcast, a whole, I mean, every episode about Antonio Inoki, I'm more <laughs> than prepared to take the reins on that. That's like, that's, that's my, my, that's my religious figure. Is he? Yeah. He's just, that's like the next level. Dude. Have you had a chance to meet him? <laughs> no, I wish, dude. That's I like have. A, you met him? No, I'm kidding. I was just trying to rile you up. Oh, I was gonna say, what did you like go to his house on Park Avenue or so? His apartment is his luxury apartment in New York City, or just something. Just trying to make you jealous. <laughs> oh, I would have been jealous, dude. I would have been so mad. <laughs> I love hearing when uh, when people talk about like meeting or knowing Antonio Inoki because obviously I I know a couple of guys that like have have known and know him pretty decently, so or you know extensively met him met, met multiple times and. Uh, it's pretty awesome to hear stories about him. So when you were in Japan, did you get to be, did you get to like have fun and, and go out and, and do things and be a tourist a little bit? Oh, I absolutely did. I, I, I barely slept because I wanted to soak in as much as humanly possible on the time I was there. Um, what was the most, what the co- the coolest deal ever was, uh, you know, I'm pretty friendly with Daosuke Sekimoto. He became a, a good, good pal. And, um, we made plans one day for me to meet him and um, go to Yokohama where he lives and work out at a gym there and whatever. He had some plans for us and uh, he let, he took me to his house. Um, we met, we met in 
um Rapungi Hills mm-hmm. at like this small little like like really like nice fancy studio type gym where I guess like he she, she's like a, he has some clients that he works with um and then we went to his home in Yokohama and it's like a long train ride so we talked the whole time and you know Sekimoto speaks like enough English and I understand like enough Japanese where it's like, okay, like we can have a conversation without like having to use a translator. So we get along pretty well. And uh, I brought him some like magazines and stuff that I found like champions or something. I bought some like books and all his favorite wrestlers on them. Hmm. And uh, we went to his house and his wife, he's, he's like, my wife cooked it up. Like, so we like went, we went to his house, dude, and uh, I ate like this fucking full scale meal, like like multiple like dishes. It was so good at his house with his his wife and his daughter was there. He has like a, like a nine year old daughter, and her, his nine year old daughter t- took out like her English homework, uh-huh. and um, it started sh- showing me all the words th- that she knows how to say and pronouncing them. And she was so good. She she knew like how to say a lot of stuff in english so i was like doing i looked at the homework and i would like ask her what this was or i'd point to stuff or i'd like help her pronounce stuff and i basically like did english homework with his daughter <laughs> that's and such a like a once in a lifetime amazing experience yeah and then we went to this fucking gym that was like the downstairs floor of someone's house this old retired cop he said that lived upstairs and Dowski Sekimoto loves Billy Joel. So like we put on Billy Joel and worked out to Billy Joel for like two hours. We had this insane leg workout. And he's just such a freak. He's so strong. So it's like trying to follow that. You gotta you know this is, I'm 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 in the literal hell. And uh <laughs> and that's that's it, man. And then we went we went back to his house, ate again. And uh <laughs> and then he drove me back to Tokyo. Uh it was it was uh it was a really great night there. And I also got to go, I, you know, one of the real craziest things I did that was like, what the fuck pinch me my life. You know, the first wrestler wrestling match I ever saw happening in like Japan on and I'm watching it on a screen. Like this is Japanese wrestling was Masato Tanaka versus Mr. Pogo mm. on an FMW VHS tape. <laughs> so I obviously grew to love Masato Tanaka because I loved Mike Awesome. I was into ECW and I just, Masato Tanaka is one of the first things of Japanese wrestling someone like my age or from my generation would see. Yeah. So this guy's like my hero and I, he's, he's in my top five of all time. And I've wrestled him before too, which is like unreal, pretty <laughs> dope. So when we went, when I went to Japan, I not only did I work for GCW, but I got booked by other companies too. And one of the companies that I that wanted to book me was Zero One, where he's pretty influential. So mm-hmm. I uh, went and I wrestled for Zero One, and he was like, he was, he's like, oh, you want to eat sushi tonight? So like, you know, come out to eat sushi with me. And I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, Matt Justice, we tagged on the show. And we won too. And I put someone through a Japanese table, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> and uh, they're not gimmicked, right? They're absolutely positively not gimmicked. I had to, <laughs> I, I had like a backup plan where it's like, oh, if don't go this time. It's going the next time, baby. <laughs> so, um, and, and it fucking went. We totally broke it. But uh, I basically, me, Matt, went out to eat sushi with Masao Tanaka after the Zero One show. And like these two, and oh, this other dude named Mimata, who is a, a like kind of a famous comedian who's friends with um, Masao Tanaka. And he's like, I guess supposed to be like, he's like a, a personality for Zero One Pro Wrestling. And two other guys who were there at the sushi place. And they're, 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 this, this was like a real interesting group. And it was just us. In this little sushi bar, and they were all friends with the guy who owned it, and we ate sashimi for like hours and drank beer. <laughs> I, I got drunk. It, it, the bill had to be like astronomical, and the, the 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 other guys, the guys took care of it. These guys took care of it, and paid for it, and we ate like fucking kings. And I was like eating sushi with like my Japanese wrestling hero, like <laughs> like talking about eighties Japanese metal and. <laughs> you know I, I was just like where am i like what, what like how did i this is what this is everything i worked for in my life i know it sounds like kind of cheesy some people may not understand it they may not get it but 
I mean, that's worth more than than any any dollar amount. Like, you know, it's just yeah. you have those moments where it's like, this is this is who I was wishing, dreaming of being when I was like a 15, 16 year old kid. Like that's, that's, that to me is powerful to realize like, holy shit. I'm like, I'm, I'm not only living it. I'm living like the, the whole deal right now. So it was, uh, it was definitely awesome. To do that. Yeah, but you mean somebody like yourself, you paid your dues and earned it. You know, you really did earn it. You, you earned this trip over there. You, you, Oh yeah. yeah. There was opportunities uh, over the years to do like the, fly yourself thing Mm -hmm. or you know do you want to go and like stay in a dojo for wrestle one and pay and pay to fly yourself there and you know no i guess i just never it never sat well with me i always saw it being like a lot i have to somewhat turn it into something uh long term like that was where ultimately i knew my career would go um and i wasn't gonna like completely go over there not having any worth on myself at all Mm mm-hmm so, you know, it only made sense to wait. And the, trust me, man, like the juice was worth the squeeze. <laughs> uh, when, I, when I say like the entire trip, every detail, I could tell you from, from eating out at every restaurant, every interaction with a fan, I met a girl over there, just everything you could imagine was about it was a positive experience. And most of all, it was just wrestling 24 seven, you know, they really appreciate wrestling over there. Just think about all the stores you could go to for pro wrestling, MMA, like all, all that stuff that they have over there. That's, that's just 100% full on appreciation and legitimate fandom and love for, for the things that I love. So it's like, why wouldn't, this is like a dream world for me, you know? Yeah. And it's a, it's a respected job over there. You know, it's not, I mean, people here, it's like, oh, you're a wrestler, you know, you, what do you do on the weekends? You're the weekend warrior kind of guy, but over there, it's like a, it's a respected job. It's a, you know, it's, it's what they do for their living and people respect it. Don't laugh at it. Don't make fun of it. You know, it's, it's just, there's just a respect factor to it. They, they have like Japanese, most Japanese people just have really good work ethics. So they appreciate people that have to work hard. Man. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. So what would you, your 2020 has been what it's been. What was it supposed to be for you? Did you need anything go kind of sideways for you? I would have been back to Japan twice already. Really? Yeah, I was, I was already planning. I was already going back to Japan in April. And then, and then I would have went on tour now from September to like November. Mm. So that, that I already had, I had plans already immediately from the time I came home from, uh, from Japan to already go back. Was it G- another more GCW tours or just on your own? On my own. Yeah. And uh, G- well, actually, no, GCW was supposed to go in September. GCW would have been there in September for probably like three or four dates. And um, just none of it happened because of international travel and all that. But uh, I'm sure I would have wrestled a lot more. I actually was going to move back to Massachusetts. I live in New York City right now. I was going to move back to Massachusetts and then we were going to start the beyond wrestling school um, on uncharted territory would have continued and it would have, I think we would have ran the whole year straight. Um, so I would have been real busy with beyond wrestling, whether it was wrestling every week uh, from uncharted territory or training at the school plus GCW plus whatever else I was doing. I mean, I was averaging most of the time, no less than two shows a week, three, sometimes four. I was flying all over the country. I started going to Mexico for AAA. So yeah, it's disappointing. I know this year I probably lost a fuck. T- I know I lost a fuck time. I actually did the math earlier. Where me and my friend were projecting how much money <laughs> people probably lost from since the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's, you know, and it's all untaxed money too. If you think about like how much cash I get for what I do, you know, it's I'm just, an auditor. So you're in trouble, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, could, we're going to have to edit that part out <laughs> Get a little too personal, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sad, but I'm, I just have, um, I can't say that things aren't working out the way I want them to. I got some stuff in the works that you, you'll notice. And um, I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful for the, the people that continued on and kept um, trying to produce wrestling throughout this, whether it is live events or it's the closed studio stuff or whatever, anybody who just kept going, kept pursuing it and didn't, didn't roll up into a ball and just kind of get scared and go away. I, that's, that's who I, I respect the most. It's because they're keeping me alive. You know, like I said, I only had so much money saved up and I was, I was fortunate. I made some smart, smart decisions the last few years, but 
you know, Japan saved my ass, put a lot of cash in my, in my, in my, uh, in my pocket to, to get me through. But you know, the people that are still trying to get, get it done. That's why Japan is so inspiring too. Mm-hmm. You know, the way that they've, they're running events and the way they're they've handled um you know re- regulating things and the, the 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 way they got it going on over there i think new like i mentioned new japan before it's the other companies too it's it's really inspiring and it's sad that we can't kind of get on the same page as them we're just our arrogance our arrogance is getting in our own way you know too different of a culture too many yeah. cultures in one culture i don't you know it, it's it's easy it's it, the thing is we could say, why do they do, why are they so, you know, look at them. It's it, the culture is 90, 90%, probably Japanese people. Mm-hmm. They, they have way more of a shared culture than we do. We just have so many different people here from so many different backgrounds and countries and walks of life. It's just, it's, it's, it's almost impossible for everybody to get on the same page here. We're over, yeah. whereas over there, they, they, they could do it better than us. <laughs> so we lost Tracy Smothers today. Any, you got any good uh, Tracy Smothers stories at all? Yeah, Tracy Smothers. I've been wrestling on shows with Tracy Smothers since I was like 20 years old. So I've come across Tracy so many times. I've wrestled Tracy, and um, I mentioned it in a tweet today. I'll tell it on the show. But it was at like a it was at like a big AIW show, and um, Tracy Smothers did like a live in ring shoot interview with the audience like you know and uh someone interviewing him and i and uh i was there and tracy got asked about like who are the new up-and-coming guys that you like and this was a while ago this was probably like 2013 and he was he he mentioned my name and he he called me the bastard son of Bud sawyer so he that kind of like stuck with me every time I'd see him over the years. He would called me like Buzz Sawyer Jr. and uh, I really like Buzz Sawyer, so I thought it was a really cool nickname to get from someone like Tracy Smothers, who knew Buzz Sawyer, who was like legit, like from that time period. So Buzz Sawyer would maul you. Yeah, Buzz Buzz Sawyer was a badass. He'd probably kick my ass. I'm, was, a, I'm a little bit older than you, so I, I mean, I grew up. I mean, I'm I'm from San Diego, but I would wake up at six o'clock in the morning on Saturdays just to watch Georgia Championship Wrestling to see Buzz Sawyer and Tommy Rich fight each other every day. Yeah, Buzz Sawyer was also like a like a, a div, like a Division One like pro, like amateur wrestler and football player too. He was like a total complete stud, apparently. Something like that. You could. He was like a like a walk on for any like like school he he could have went went to or something for him. Like he was such a good amateur wrestler, all state, all champion, all that shit. Well, you get this. You guys have kind of similar bodies. I mean, he he looks like a wrestler. You look like a wrestler too. Yeah, we do kind of look similar. Probably about the same size, maybe. But uh, but he's just to eat people alive. Yeah, it was it was fun to watch him just destroy people. Even though I was a kid, I realized he was like, man, this guy's just thrashing these poor <laughs> poor jobbers. Yeah, my first exposure to Buzz Sawyer was uh, I bought a tape off of uh off of um, eBay when I was like fourteen or something, thirteen maybe th- younger, like thirteen. I bought a tape off of eBay when eBay was like kind of new. It said it was it was called the Best of Sting, but it was all like matches from the nwa and wcw like early that i'd never seen so i like wanted this tape i love sting and uh i got to see like a lot of um the jtex versus like Flair and sting in the nwa and i saw like all buzz sawyers there that was like a real big eye-opening great muda time for me too because I'd never really, I've seen like the great Muda a little bit, but never like wrestling in Japan, just like whatever shitty stuff he did in WCW late. Ni- like, mm. like remember he did like WCW in like 2000. Yeah. Like I knew he was this awesome guy, but he just like, we didn't have exposure to that stuff back then. Like I didn't buy VHS tapes of wrestling until I was like, maybe like t- t- two years after this. So it's just, it's hard to judge, but then I saw a great Muda on that fucking NWA shit. And I was like, what the fuck? This guy is a different level. Like who is this guy? What is the deal? And, uh, boss that's, Sawyer, that's how EO is now. That's how Oscar is. Now. Yeah. Right. 
Like, that's who the right. hell are these people? They're amazing. Where'd they come from? Yeah. You know, what's amazing about that though, is great Muda. He didn't even do that in Japan till like two or two years after that. Yeah. Like, great, great Muda is an, is, is, is an American origin gimmick. Yeah. My, my father was in the Navy, so we were stationed. I mean, I lived in San Diego almost all my life, except for four years, but we were stationed in Virginia for one year. So I got to see Muda wrestle at the Norfolk scope against, I think Ric Flair you know and, shit right you know it was like 88 89 whatever it was you know wow that's but, awesome dude yeah i got to go to a great uh no a starcade in in virginia so it was just yeah i'm very blessed i'm very thankful for all the wrestling i've got to see my <laughs> in my life but yeah but it, it's just the, the there's just something different about him there's something different about some of these these japanese wrestlers yeah they're, they're just they're they're amazing they just yeah. they have a Look, look, look at someone like him. Okay. Look at someone like him. And yeah, look at somebody, look at like these girls, some of these girls, the, the footwork is so signature, you know, the, 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 the little things, the fundamentals are so sharp that they're able to develop their own style while still executing stuff like flawlessly. Yeah. They're just so competent in every little thing. But you know, when you really, really really like look at it like what is what does keiji muto really do that that that, he doesn't have the craziest move set Mm -mm. he doesn't take the wildest bumps he doesn't take bumps like masala or kobashi uh he's just so good at the at doing what he does and and like he's so good at carrying himself in the ring his body language and his footwork is just absolutely unmatched and his timing and like storytelling. It's just, it's just, un- it's, you can't, you can't start, you can't even, you can't, you can't even top it. It's, it's unstoppable to even, to even question. It's, it's, it, it, it's a different level. Just him doing his, little, his elbow drop where he like did the little extra twerk and stuff he used to do. I mean, it's just, it it's was just way, different, you know, it's just different. The way he squares up before a match, mm-hmm. like you know, and the way he's just looking at an opponent and picking them apart before he even does anything, he's just the 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 the, the stories of his matches, uh, his big ones, you know, they're just they're incredible. And I would uh, I would definitely say like look at like some of these girls now, like Mako Satomura, and uh, she's like the, capable of having those really long, drawn out like falsy heavy. Like, how the hell did they remember all of this <laughs> crazy matches where you feel it you and it's amazing. And it's it's just they're doing it on like a whole different level. So uh, you, I, I can't even I, I watch some of this stuff and I'm like, oh, man, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. This is a great idea. And I'm like, I would do like one of these things in a match. These girls have done like seven, eight things. I'm like. What the fuck? Like some of it is, it's, they, they have some crazy matches. So if you could wrestle a Joshi wrestler, past or present, you like to do the intergender stuff. Who do you think you'd have your best match against? Oh, that's it. I don't know, man. That's a tough question. Probably. I mean, I obviously to be, honest, how could I not? Like, I think like, Oh man, like, Oscar, maybe, maybe Kana when she was like still mm-hmm. wrestling dudes, kind of. I really think we would have an insane match. Um, Manami can carry you to a good match, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> there she'd probably whoop my actually Manami Toyota. Think about like the heat she would take, and then, the come- and then the comeback she would make. It would probably be pretty unbelievable. You know, uh, I would keep you, I'd keep you away from Takako just to keep you away from her. She would probably beat me up. Like she would, like you'd let her. Those, yeah, though, that's the thing. I th- I think like some of those girls are st- stronger when they're whooping people's asses. Like she was a maniacal ass whooper. She <laughs> she was like always like doing it dirty to the other girls. Like w- like it was like the presentation of her and then the attitude in the ring was just such two totally different things. But yeah. then like you would see like uh. The, the shit in the photo books, especially the later stuff with the other girls. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, like what is, there's some like wild shit underlying shit going on with those girls wrestling each other. You would think sometimes it's like, it's just, like the, the scowls on their face. I mean, they were serious. They, you know, they weren't smiling and having a good time. They, they wouldn't, they looked at you like, I'm going to beat your ass. 
with her, it's like, I don't know. Are they getting like a little kinky in there? Like what was going on? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like some of that stuff is so wild from back in the day. Like just, just none of, like, like they, they, they start to like, uh, like those matches from back then, they, they lose like all rhyme or reason at some point, And they're just turned into like wild brawls. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's I don't, I don't want to call it like mid south wrestling because it's not it's not really like the mid south stuff but it's just yeah. wild crazy brawls yeah it's just like it's it's almost they have like their own speed yeah. their own psychology it's like it is pretty wild it's kind of like i don't know um it's almost like lucha libre a little bit sometimes it's like non-stop yeah. non-stop like the constant like you know, you'll see like Takako go to the top rope like three times in like one spot. Yeah, and come off with like a different thing each time. And just, look, am- and look amazing doing it every single time <laughs> and hitting it perfectly every single time. When she does that flying knee, oh. that flying knee off the top rope, <laughs> pretty fucking dope. Like okay, another like real crazy from back in the day, like awesome wrestler great storyteller but like could be a total spot machine but like do it so well is uh kyoko inoye yes those matches that she has are like fucking nuts and like the the trust fall backwards oh. like <laughs> it's crazy people see these guys doing it now like oh these guys are just amazing and you know they're they're fearless like yeah no the the, the japanese girls have been doing this for 20 years <laughs> it's like yeah how do you uh how do you even I, I think it's so unbelievable that Etsuko Mita invented the Death Valley Driver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you notice, I started using the Death Valley Driver as a finish on that United Wrestling Network. Uh-huh. And, and it's honestly, it's, it's directly because of her. Like, I will say, I definitely love doing the move all the time because of like Masao Tanaka, sure. Mm-hmm. But that now I only, I recognize that move as hers. Yeah. And, uh, I, I want, I like want to protect it because <laughs> I feel like she would really like fucking choke me or something. You know? If I, it, yeah, I feel like, okay, if I really, let's be real, the, probably the best match I could have would be me and my old tag partner, Jaka versus the LCO. That Ooh. would just, yeah, that would probably just be a total juice fest. <laughs> you have to put I, him over. Well, I'm definitely. Are you kidding me? I'm not I'm not winning, beating any of those girls. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. So, so you you like to help uh, Daisuke Sakamoto's uh, daughter with her homework? The listeners to help them do their homework. If they should watch one Joshi match, what Joshi match would Chris Dickinson suggest for the listeners to to watch? Oh man, that's a real that's a real tough question because there's so many matches. Hmm. <laughs> What wrestler do you think they should go their their uh, YouTube rabbit hole then? You have to watch Minami Toyota. I mean, it's just she's the queen. She yeah. really is the queen. It's like we could talk about all these other girls, uh, and and they're all so amazing, and there's so many of them, and they're all so talented. But I think Minami Toyota is like somebody who, um, she's she's uh, put it this way, man. She, when they made Virtual Pro Wrestling, right? WCW uh, versus NWO World Tour. They created like all the different um, rosters with different Japanese companies, and there's no girls. There's one girl. Mm. It's her. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's just, she, she's just like a superhero or something. She's like a was the living embodiment of like a superhero. Like she's the she's the Masawa and the and the she's the Kajimoto of of women's wrestling. Yeah, yeah she's just. Something about her, dude. She's she's just she's just is like a special special person. She was somebody I really wanted to interview, but I just never got the chance to. So she seems pretty cool. I've heard stories about her. Um, she did Chikara and stuff, and I've heard uh, good stuff about her. Definitely, I think mm. she's. I've heard she's a pr- pretty nice person. That's good. That's good. Yeah, Bull Bull was the, the sweetest of sweethearts. So I'm guessing they all are. Yeah, I'm, I I wish you would have did like a word association with Bull and named all the girls yeah she imagine oh no she's a fucking cunt <laughs> yeah she but she wouldn't say that you know she, no she, exactly no i excuse my language that was yeah. gross but she, but even but, she yeah. even she was like it's there was some kayfabe there was when i was talking to her you know they still they live it you know what's funny is like 
I, I I live almost for the 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 gossip here in America, like the behind the scenes stuff. I like I mean I can't help myself but like go look for that stuff. Yeah. But I don't like American wrestling <laughs> that much. But I can't I, I don't know the backstage stuff in Japan and I enjoy that wrestling more. <laughs> yeah, well, I told you it's I, they I'm sabotaging see- myself by like reading the stuff in here, you know. Yeah, well, that's because it, do you understand that that's like part of the wrestling culture here? Yeah, that's yeah. like that stuff is like what 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 you know that stuff greases the wheels. It makes it, it makes the it keeps the lights on. Yeah, the, the, people eat that shit up because that's the way Americans are. Americans like to watch other people's demise. Yeah, you know, Unfor- so, uh, unfortunately, I've, I've bought into that some you know with with wrestling. Yeah, it's just it's fu- come on, man. Back in the day, everybody wanted to hear like about what an ass. Hulk Hogan was right. It only <laughs> added to his mystique and his aura. Like, you know? So I get it, but in, in Japan, I think they're just really way better at protecting kayfabe. Yeah, and then, and then me getting interviews has been very difficult sometimes because a lot of the people they've never done anything like this in the West. So I mean, a lot of the people I've talked to, the first time they've done English interviews was with me, which is amazing. So I mean, it, it's kind of nice they're opening the door a little bit, but I don't want I don't want them to open the door very much. It's wild, um, like it's wild to me that some of these women aren't way more popular now than than they should be. Yeah, or some of these wrestlers in general. It's like I can't believe it because they're so they are pretty popular. Like when I explained to uh, Masao Tanaka how popular like FMW still was, like just the name FMW and the the <laughs> likeness and people like bootlegging merchandise. Like I explained to him like like how it's a big thing here. He couldn't believe it. He 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 didn't like understand like just how well like respected, known, and popular he really was. Yeah. And it, and that kind of like put it into perspective for me for like a lot of them. It's like I would think like Takako Inoye would be like a huge deal still or something. You know what I mean? Just yeah. based off of like the way she looks, um, her wrestling like history and all that. But I, I don't know if it was like the way those companies kind of all like went out of business or went down or the way things worked back then, but. It seemed like some of them lived on with leg like Akira Hokuto. She's fucking super famous. Yeah. Like why? Like it's it's just, just she just stayed in the limelight. She was married to Kensuke Sasaki. Like I don't, how did some of them kind of still remain famous, and some of them kind of just like went back underground or something? Is it, is it some of them adapt to social media better than others? Like what's your take on that? Well, I, I think some of them are more open to being to stay in the public eye and going on those variety shows and, and doing things like that, and some some weren't. I think you know, and 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 some were. <laughs> some were still wrestling when Joshi died for a while. And yeah. I think they, I think they died with it. You know, they, they were part of that, but no, like the Chigusa Nagayos is, you know, she still got power over there and she, she has marvelous. Yeah. And she, they, they have this thing called assemble right now too, where they're putting a bunch of different Joshi promotions together to, to put on all-star shows. Basically. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been paying attention to it. I've yeah. Been... So, I mean, but that, that was her baby, you know, she kind of snapped her fingers and said, Hey guys, we need to do this. And, even the biggest company over there, Stardom, you know, took part in it because Chagusa still got juice over there. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of, uh, do you like Jungle Kiona? Yeah, she's really good. She yeah. is. She's awesome. Yeah. The, the one I thought was going to be the, the transcending star was going to be Hana Kimura. I really thought that, you know, she, yeah. she was getting better at wrestling. I mean, wrestling was not, you know, she doesn't wrestle like Mayu Itani or some of those other people, but she was getting there. And I just think her look and her charisma and stuff, she would have been a worldwide super duper star. Yeah, it seems like it was going that direction. I didn't even think she was like Japanese. I remember when I first saw her, I thought she was some some Southeast Asian or mm-hmm. something. She had a different look. You yeah, know? she's she's half Japanese. Um, yeah, yeah, half Japanese. But first time yeah, I saw I her, like, I, fell, I fell in love with her the first time I saw her. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you the way I got into Joshi. Really, are we running on too long? No, you're good, buddy. I, 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 hey, you're giving me your time. I appreciate chatting with you. No, I, uh, I, so what happened was like, I didn't, I always knew about obviously Minami Toyota and all this stuff. I, I never really watched it though. I watched like some uh, matches over the years, but I never really like, hardcore deep dived into it. But um, it, until like this last like 12 months, I'd say time period. But oh, last year, I, um, I started watching um, Hiroyo Matsumoto. Yeah. Okay. I started like following her 
and I was like, holy shit, like this girl's really good. I obviously always liked Kana. I knew she was. Um, I liked Kana for a while, even before she was in WWE. So I, I knew who Matsumoto was, but I don't know. I don't remember how I started catching her matches. I started looking her up on, on YouTube. And then I was like, oh shit, this girl's awesome. And uh, then I started watching, like I started watching um, Mako Satomura. I found her. And I started like seeing like what she was about and how serious she was. And then I started like, okay, let me go back and actually watch Minami <laughs> Toyota and watch like all Japan women's wrestling and all that. And that was how I got exposed to all the, the old stuff, like really watching it. Um, I was watching Akira Okuto. I was watching like Aja Kong. Um, I, then I got into the LCO. I found Takako, Kyoko. I always knew Kyoko was, but I never really watched. And, and so Ma Hiroyo Matsumoto was kind of like my gateway into wanting to watch all this Japanese girls wrestling. And then I started watching the new stuff too. And I started watching Sendai girls and I, I, I fell in love with this other girl. I absolutely am a huge fan of hers. Uh, Dash Chisako. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's really, really good. And um, I started watching Sendai Girls, and I watch Marvelous. I have a friend of mine. She's in Marvelous, and um, she's she's been over there throughout the whole pandemic. Masha? Uh, yeah, she's really cool. Yeah, I've, I've talked to her a few times. She's really cool. Yeah, and um, I watch some Marvelous stuff. I've, I've watched some Stardom stuff. I just kind of like try to keep up on it as best as I can. There's so, but, there's so much it's impossible to stay up on, on everything. Yeah, like I never really watched Ice Ribbon. It's good too. It's good too, huh? Yeah. yeah so Kasa Fujimoto is amazing. Mai Yukihi is amazing. Suzu Suzuki, she's like 17. She's amazing already. It's, it's, it'll blow your mind. That's crazy to me. Some of these girls, they're so young. AZM, yeah, Yumi, that one. She's yeah. a kid, like a kid, but she's so good at wrestling. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, they're Chris wild. Yeah, it's amazing. Hey, Chris, where can we find you on social media, buddy? Um, you could uh, on uh, Instagram is at Born Dirty Die Dirty, on Twitter at Dirty Dickinson. Yeah, that's that's your, your two best places to find me on social media. And you will definitely are going to be the future United Wrestling Network heavyweight champion. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate. I appreciate the hopefulness. I've and that's not hopefulness. It's confidence. I'm I'm confident you're going to win that title. Very good. Very good. Sugoi. <laughs> so you're you're almost a, ha a regular here in California now. So maybe sometime uh, we can run into each other. Sometime you're in you're in Southern California. Oh, I love California. I love it. So yeah, hopefully I will. Hopefully we'll run into each other. I'm sure hopefully there'll be some shows again next year. You know, things will start kind of the ball start rolling a little bit more. I'll tell B boy to bring you back down here. Yeah, I would love to. I, I had a blast. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's real fun to talk Joshi with uh, the, the guys that appreciate the Joshi. It's not, you know, just pay, patronizing the women. You actually appreciate it. And I, and I appreciate you, you coming on and discussing it with me. No problem, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>